Hello everyone and welcome to this course on microcontroller programming for power electronics engineers. So in this lecture I'm going to get started by describing what this course is about and what we are going to be covering in this course. The next few courses in this introduction section will describe various other aspects of this course such as who are the target students of this course, what are the requirements for completing this course and what is the best way in which you can go through this course. So in this course, I'm going to be using the TMS320 F28069 microcontroller from Texas Instruments. Now this TMS320 F28069 is a part of the C2000 series of microcontrollers by Texas Instruments and these series of microcontrollers have been extremely popular in many power electronics applications. So this means that you're going to be using a microcontroller that is a very popular microcontroller for the power electronics industry. So in this course, I'll be using the C, the Code Composer Studio development environment provided by Texas Instruments. This is a completely free integrated development environment that not only provides a code editor, but also provides an entire integrated environment where you can compile your projects, download it to the microcontroller and also execute the project, also execute the co code on the microcontroller as long as the microcontroller is connected to the host computer by a USB cable. So this Code Composer Studio environment is an extremely, extremely useful and powerful, powerful application provided completely free by Texas Instruments. Now, Texas Instruments has provided a lot of technical documentation about all its microcontrollers and also including the TMS320 F28069 microcontroller. And all this tech technical documentation can be found freely available at the Texas Instruments website. So this course will use this documentation, but most importantly, a lot of this documentation is extremely detailed and extremely long. The main technical documentation for this microcontroller is more than 1000 pages. So therefore, in this course, you know, I will describe to you, which is the best way to actually read this document and how you can use this document as a quick reference guide, even though it is more than 1000 pages. So any microcontroller, and this also includes the TMS320 F28069, will have many peripherals and many features. And this is simply because we are expecting more and more from our microcontrollers and in general from all our computers. So therefore, almost any microcontroller now has a serial parallel interface, has a USB interface, has a Wi-Fi interface and many others. However, this course will only cover those features which are necessary to get started with power electronics projects. So this is not a complete A to Z course. Rather, this is a very, very specific course targeted towards power electronics students who want to do, use microcontrollers for power electronics projects. And the reason is because you will find a lot of courses on microcontrollers available online, but very few are targeted toward, towards power electronic applications. Almost none of the courses will deal with those peripherals that we power electronics engineers need. They will deal with a number of peripherals such as the Zigbee interface or the USB interface, but they do not deal with peripherals such as timers, pulse width modulation and analog to digital conversion, which are the most important for power electronics engineers. And in this course, I'm going to be talking about exactly these peripherals in a great amount of detail. So the purpose of this course is to fill that gap, right? Because I am a power electronics engineer. I've been using microcontrollers for a long, long time. I've used many, many different families, not just the F28069, but I've used the F28335, I've used the VC33, and I've used even fixed point processors. This is long, long back, 15 years back. So therefore, I have a lot of experience with using microcontrollers, and especially the Texas Instruments microcontrollers. And therefore, I would like to make it possible because when we were learning microcontrollers, a lot of our knowledge was gained through just trial and error, just trying out different things and checking out if they work. And therefore, this course has been created to help engineers get a good reference material for programming microcontrollers for their projects. So it is for this reason that I'm dealing with only a limited number of features, but these limited number of features, I'm going to go into great depth so that if 
you need any one feature in a very different manner almost all of them you will find I will cover some application or the other for example in terms of pulse width modulation I will talk about how you can generate different type of modulation signals for various different applications so in this course we will be using C programming to program a microcontrollers now in recent times there are many many advanced graphical user interface based approaches to programming microcontrollers right and I will talk about that very soon but nowadays you don't most people if they want to program a microcontroller you don't need to use C programming there are very very other more convenient graphical user interface based tools yet in this course I'm going to be using C programming and in the next lecture I'll describe why that is important but if you are to take this course I would encourage you to review your knowledge of C program I will be describing programs as much as possible wherever whenever I'm writing those programs but it would be much much more convenient if you just do a quick review of your C programming knowledge and there are many many online tutorials for that purpose so one of the advantages of using Texas instruments is the number of documentation and the resources that they provide they provide a huge number of examples documentations and all kinds of source code that you can use to make your life much easier as you program microcontrollers so Texas Instruments had provided examples for almost every different use case that you would need while programming your microcontroller and in this course I will describe how you can read these examples how to interpret these examples how to understand the contents and different files they are using because a simple example even a very simple example will use a number of different files from different directories and it's important that you understand why these files are necessary what purpose they serve and how you can use them for your own purposes so even though this course is mainly about programming microcontrollers it is almost impossible to do so without actually going into some of the hardware details of the microcontroller and also its peripherals so therefore this course will also try to describe the architecture of the microcontroller and the peripheral devices because some amount of hardware details are essential in order to complete the my programming examples as an example I will go into how the microcontroller and the peripherals operate how they function and how this functioning can be controlled using specific registers so for example I'll be talking about con configuration registers control registers data registers and how you can how what is the structure of these registers and we'll be going into every detail such as every register and every bit within these registers. so this is the amount of granular detail that I'll be going in when I talk about how we can program this microcontroller and the peripherals so while we are programming we will go back and forth between C programs and technical documentation because it is important that while you are writing C programs you must learn how to reference the technical documentation so as to make your life much easier because if you are only using the examples and playing around with them you are not getting the full power of the entire peripheral devices and also the microcontroller so it is important that you actually learn while writing C programs how to read technical documentation so that you can know exactly how to program a particular peripheral and a particular register so this is what this program this course is all about in the next few lectures I'm going to talk about some of the details about how this course can be done best who are the students that this course might benefit from and a few other details so if you have any doubts about what I talked about, please do post in the Q&A forum and I'll be happy to help you out. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you so much and see you soon. Goodbye for now.